during the, I mean, we're sort of, during Whistle Test's sort of prime days, uh, the West Coast sound was very strong of America. It, it, was, it was, there were a lot of singer-songwriters, sort of Joni Mitchell, Jackson Brown, um, Jesse Colin Young, that time, and the Eagles uh, and, and the bigger bands. It, it was a very dominant era. Um, in the album market. Don't forget the Whistle Test was featured albums and only albums, although we we didn't sort of stop singles that were off albums, but basically it everything had to be on albums. So there was a lot of American music that was very strong in the album market. Uh, at the time, there was a degree of touring bands coming in but it was limited because there had to be exchange in television terms, so there had to be exchanges, and exchanges were a pain in the butt. Um, if you didn't get a musical exchange for an English band going to the States, then you couldn't have them, have them in the studio uh, in the BBC. And so we had to define a way of featuring the music that we wanted to feature without the bands. Um, and what we, what I did was um, I spoke with a guy called Phil Jenkinson who had a fabulous collection of, of old movies um, and we divulged a way of featuring music cut to these old films and, and I mean it's totally Phil because he did the cutting and everything and there, there were some brilliant ones. I mean there are still people who go around quoting Trampled Underfoot by Zeppelin as being a, a sort of seminal moment in their visual experience on television. Uh, and they, it, it was interesting because it was there uh, uh, as a necessity for us to be able to feature the music we wanted.